Some of the looks were a little bit questionable. First up, I will say the proportions on this are finally right. Controversial statement on Drag Queen. Now, if you pay attention to the edit, For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen living in Belgium. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Today, we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 16, Episode 10, and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. And stay tuned till the end where I let you know which looks were the best and worst of the week. This week's runway theme is True Colors, where the queens must give us their best interpretation of one specific color. Which queen did what color and what did they come to bring to this stage? Well, let's get into it and find out. First up, it's Maya Iman LePage, and Maya Iman LePage is coming out in red, baby. She's got this red dress with all the sequins on it and this big black hair. Immediately, I'm going pageant, baby. This looks so expensive, so regal, so rich, and I quite love it. This is the best Maya has looked. She stepped up her pussy all the way. Some of Maya's looks were a little bit questionable, but this is not it. Originally in the season, she said she was a pageant gal, and I didn't really believe it. But seeing this, I'm like, oh, she's not a pageant or two. She knows what she's doing. As gorgeous as she looks, it does remind me of a look that Janie JK has already done. And that's a little unfortunate because had I not known that, then I would have even loved this gown even more. Now, looking at it, this does look super expensive. It's got feathers, it's got jewels, it's got a nude illusion that actually looks like a nude illusion. You know, it's got some color matching. She's got black hair. I think it would have been cute with blonde hair to give you a little bit of that Marilyn Monroe fantasy. But you know what? This looks gorgeous on her all as well. All in all, this is an excellent look for Maya. And call me impressed. She is definitely getting a fab. <laughs> Next up, it's Nymphia Wind, and shocker, Nymphia Wind is coming out in yellow. Are we surprised? Not only is she doing yellow, but she's doing banana yellow. Oh my god. Nymphia Wind with her yellow and banana, she's definitely giving you trademark. When she comes out, I was definitely getting Banana Gal. I was getting maybe, you know, Miss Kachita. You know that old school banana lady that was on the bananas? You know what I'm talking about? Miss Chiquita or something like that. But she said she's actually giving you uh, Josephine Baker, which makes more sense, honestly. I definitely see that. Uh, I mean, Josephine Baker made the banana skirt infamous. But yeah, it's definitely giving you all of that. And the one thing about Nymphia Wind is no matter what she does, she does it at a really high level and executes it to perfection. She's got bananas on her chest that give you like this little bralette. She's got a banana like headpiece. She's got a banana skirt. And she's definitely giving you that fantasy with her like flamenco dress underneath. It is spectacular and every detail is really thought through. Now, the one thing I will say about Miss Nymphia Wind is that we've seen the banana thing done. I think we got it. We get that it's your thing. I'm kind of getting a little bit bored of the banana thing and that's kind of crazy to say because this outfit is so elegant and so genius. Had she not done three banana looks for her reveal look on the first week, then this probably would have felt really special and cool. I feel like we've seen some version of this already from Nivea Wynn this season. And that's sort of like the issue. With all of these banana looks, I would be so curious to go look in Miss Nymphia's closet. I'm really curious to see what else she's got in there because something tells me this ain't the only banana look. Despite my a little slight annoyance about her keeping to do this banana thing, I do love the look and it is gorgeous and it is well made and she does look exquisite and that is why she is getting a buff. Next up, it's Plain Jane, and Plain Jane has given us green. Oh, I personally love the color green. It's one of my favorite colors, but we all know that Michelle Visage hates green, so I was quite interested to see somebody choose this color. 
Plain Jane does decide that she's gonna come out and do this sort of like nude illusion with these green appliques put on it that sparkle to the heavens. It's giving you a little bit of mother nature. It's giving you a little bit like slutty Eve from Adam and Eve. And it's definitely giving you I am Envy or I am from the Emerald City of Oz. She looks exquisite, but honestly, Plain Jane always looks good. Her body and her padding, mama, this is next, next level. I definitely need to learn a thing or two from Miss Plain Jane. Her mug is stamped, her hair is coiffed, and the body looks stunning. The gown itself is quite gorgeous. I like that she decided to play with this nude illusion and just give you that little bit of green, especially knowing that Michelle Massage hates green. I thought this was a very interesting way to go about it. Now, that being said, I kind of wish there was a little bit more green. I actually think that the dress is perfect as is and would not change it. I think she could have just added a little bit of green in all of her accessories. For example, her nails. I wish her nails were like a nice dark green. I wish she would have done a little bit of green eyeshadow uh, just to bring some of the green up to her face and maybe green hair or maybe just like a darker hair, maybe like a black hair or maybe like just one green streak. I don't know. There's there's just something that needs to be added to the top of the face to really bring the green all the way up. Right now, I feel like it just kind of stops on the dress and there's nothing more. That being said, I'm being really picky with this one because I'm trying to find a fault for it because otherwise I'm just going to say it looks good and that is kind of makes a boring video. All in all, she looks good and therefore she is getting a bow. Next up, it's Safira Cristal, and Safira Cristal is coming in in, you guessed it, blue. For all the jokes we make about Nymphia Wind choosing yellow, I will say that Safira Cristal has also been doing a lot of blue. Pay attention every single week. That being said, Safira knows her brand, and she decides to come out in royal blue. She got this big, bustling royal blue gown, and she said that she is giving you a little bit of Queen Charlotte, a little bit of that Bridgerton vibe, you know what I mean? And she's paired it with this tall blue hair. Now, if you told me that you were gonna be wearing tall blue hair on the runway, I would have told you don't do it, because tall blue hair, the first thing I think of is Marge Simpson, and you don't wanna be looking at no camp, you wanna be looking But Safira Cristal has found a way to take tall blue hair and make it regal, make it avant-garde, make it extraordinaire. And I'm like, girl, I love it. I love this idea. Um, it goes to show the versatility. It goes to show how her brain works. This is definitely feeling like royalty. It definitely feels like something that would come out of maybe an opera, which we know she's an opera singer. So this definitely fits her brand on more than one level. It fits her brand because it's on color, but it also fits her brand because it's got this like, you know, regalness that exudes from her and her drag. All in all, this is delicious. This is extraordinary. There is so many details to love. And if you hadn't guessed, it is definitely gonna be a bow. Next up, it's Dawn, and Dawn has chosen gray blue as her color theme. She's coming out in this weird creature as a drag, which is made up of like this fabric that's got stars on it and cutouts, and definitely giving you that weird creature vibes that Dawn is known for. She said that she is giving you sleepy bedtime friend and channeling fabrics and things that she would use on her bed. And that's why she's got like this star fabric on her and she's got this long head. Now, if you pay attention to the edit, you will hear that sleepy bedtime friend seems to be cut out of a different thing and so which makes me think that they were probably not allowed to say something on the show and wanted to make a cohesive sentence and I say this because when she came out my first thought was oh she's doing a play on Eeyore you know Eeyore from the Winnie the Pooh which is a Disney owned brand and so she, they probably weren't allowed to say now I don't know if that is what she was going for or wasn't what she was going for but either way it doesn't matter because she made it work if you knew the reference or didn't know the reference or if I'm just making up the reference, honestly. But Dawn is giving you her Dawn S vibes. She's definitely going in this like weird creature aesthetic. And I love that she didn't go like the pageant gown way just because we've seen a lot of queens do that on this runway for whatever reason. Um, and, but she decided, you know what? I'm going to go in a different direction. I'm going to go in my own direction. And that's what I love about Dawn. She's 
she's not trying to be somebody else. She's herself and she knows who she is and she sticks with it. The silhouette itself is a very Dawn silhouette. The makeup itself is a very Dawn makeup. The idea is a very Dawn uh, aesthetic. And because it is so Dawn, it is so her, who am I to critique this look? Like, I think she's the only one that can pull this off. And because she did pull it off, she is definitely getting a ah! Next up, it's Q. And Q is coming in in lavender. She is coming out in this uh, little bralette uh, with these pants. That is right, pants on a runway, on a drag queen. Oh my God. And this giant hat that twingles all over. First up, I will say the proportions on this are excellent and finally right. So one thing about Q is that her outfits are always stunning and we're gonna get into that in just a minute. But one of the issues I always have with Q is she likes to do these headpieces that are generally really small and she's got like these big beautiful outfits and it just always feels disproportionate mainly because she's not wearing any hair. But in this case, she decided to go with a giant hat that really brought you that drama, brought you that extra oomph, which I love. This is, this is what she should be doing more of, a lot more bigger at the top. That said, I also like it because she's paired it with pants. Now, pants is a controversial statement on drag queens. Some people love it, some people hate it because it gives a little bit too mask. I think it works here. Because her body is so slim and it's giving you pants that isn't maybe a little bit more masculine, this hat really not only gave you proportion, but gave you the drama to counterbalance everything. Now, about the garments, I've said it once and I'll say it again, she needs to stick to designing. This is freaking fantastic and I know every queen will want a look from her. The fact that she makes her own looks and they're at this level, like, mama, these are better than most of the drag race looks we've seen and she's doing them herself. Girl, just, just girl, like amazing, amazing. On that note, I don't think that lavender is necessarily her best color. I think that she, uh, something a little bit punchier would have been better. Personally, if she did go into the purple, I think like a more of an eggplant color would have been more suited because it would have made her a little bit brighter and a little bit punchier. Q is a lighter skin tone kind of gal. And so lighter colors on a light gal, it, they sometimes wash out. And that's sort of the little issue I have here. That being said, that's the only negative I got. And since that's the only negative I got, it is definitely gonna have to be a pop. Next up, it's Morphine Love Dion. And Morphine Love Dion is coming out giving you royal purple. She is coming out giving you the eggplant fantasy. She's got this dark purple against her skin tone and she's giving you like this nude illusion. She has got the rhinestones from head to toe that really make it glisten as she's walking down the runway. On top of it, she's got this giant hat made of ostrich feathers, which mama expenses, and she is looking stunning. Morphine is definitely a body oddy type queen, and so this is no surprise that she is showing body. But I love how she's doing it in this color. This is definitely not the color I thought she was gonna go. I thought Morphine was definitely gonna go into the red because again, I have flashbacks from her week one where she did like flamenco uh, talent show, which she just looked stunning in. Uh, but purple was quite a departure and I like it. This is a very beautiful departure. The one criticism I will have for Morphine is the nude illusion. Clearly she got this nude bodysuit underneath that she then sort of rhinestone to give you that nude illusion. Unfortunately, the nude illusion does not match her skin tone. I get the feeling that she probably ordered this nude illusion off of like AliExpress and then sort of stoned it and made it more extra and got all the other pieces made around it. And because she bought it off of one of, whether it be AliExpress or another Asian site, and this skin tone is definitely made for like a white Caucasian uh, Asian lady and not this Latina that we have here. It just needs to be a little bit darker so it can blend in so that we can really feel the illusion a little bit better. But that's my only critique. If she could just dye that, then this would have been perfect and stunning. All in all, it might not be perfect, but it's definitely stunning. And that is why she is getting a buff. Woof. Man, what did you guys think of that runway? My God, some excellent, excellent looks. I love this color theme runway. And did you notice that they all came out in the rainbow sequence to, you know, give that nod to that rainbow flag? Unfortunately, nobody did orange uh, and we did have a couple of blues. Personally, I think had I been on the show, I would have either done a neon green, 
a neon orange, or a neon purple, because you know what? It's gotta be neon if my name is neon. Girl, put me on one of these shows. I feel like I could really kill it. This is 1.0 version. Wait till I get on the show. I'll give you 10.0 version. But enough about me. Let's talk about why you guys are still here. You guys are here to find out who had my fabs and drabs of the week. Well, my drab of the week this week has to go to... No one, I was debating if I was gonna do a fab or drab, but considering I didn't drab anybody, I'm not gonna give a drab of the week. I think they all did excellent, and it, the competition is getting tight, and I'm very curious what's gonna happen next. But enough about the negative, let's talk about the positive. You wanna know who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week this week has to go to... Morphin <laughs> A lot of amazing garments this week. It really could have went either way. I decided to go with Morphin Love Dion because she's really elevated everything. I feel like she didn't get the wins in previous weeks. And I love that she went with purple, which was unexpected and definitely brought it into a different dimensionality. All in all, this was an excellent week. Uh, I could have went with so many queens, uh, but just for the surprise factor, I 100% had to go with Morphine. So that is it for this week's episode. Do you agree or disagree with my thoughts? Well, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I do read all of them and I do reply to most of them. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Guys, we hit a thousand subscribers and I am so excited. I want to thank everybody who's been watching. It really means a lot to me. Uh, now I just need to hit those 4,000 watch hours to actually get paid for doing this. Right now, this is just a hobby. So do me a favor and go watch another one of my videos when uh, this one ends. Once again, my name is Neon Noir, at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.